In this chapter, we are going to cover the security in EA, specifically the data sets security. Now, in general, in an, the analytics world, if you look at the different layers of security, you will find first the authentication and authorization. And pretty much the authentication is having a username and a password. And the, these are things we generate from the Salesforce, just being uh, from the fact of the user being a Salesforce user. So I have a login. I have a password, I can, I can log into the system, I am authenticated. The second layer is authorization. Authorization is I have, do I have the permission set license and the permission sets? So I have a license to use analytics, check. And not only that, uh, the license give me access to about 12 or 13 permissions. Do I have all of them, some of them? What can I do with the product once I'm logged in? So that is authorization. So assuming I do have access to Analytics Studio, I pretty much have everything. I clicked on Analytics Studio. Now I'm looking at Analytics Studio. This is the third layer that kicks in, which is the asset access. Asset access is the ability of, if I see an app, then I have access to everything in it, the dashboards, the lenses, the data sets. If I don't see an app, then I don't, I'm not aware that the app actually exists. So that is the asset access. Let's assume I have access to the app and someone else has access, access to the same app, I run the dashboard, returns 10,000 rows, someone else runs it, and it returns 5,000 rows, or uh, analysis against 5,000 rows. That is determined by the data security or the row level. That is the lowest level of the data security. Um, FYI, some folks might argue that there is a, a fifth layer would could be the columnary security, column security, which is typically used in databases, uh, or in Salesforce, you can say the field uh, access, uh, field security. We don't have that necessarily in the data set, but we can create multiple through slice, uh, slicing the fields and just having different versions. Now that we have covered the layers of security, the common way to um, address data row level security or the common two ways is either through sharing inheritance or through the security predicates. Now sharing inheritance can be enabled at two levels. First, you need to enable it under settings. And so if we go back to our environment, all the way back to setup, analytics, settings. If you scroll down, this is inherit sharing from Salesforce. And the second level is at the data set level, recommended at the data set level. For example, if you go to a data set, you are going to see in the edit of that data set a placeholder for sharing. So when you use sharing, you want to specify the sharing source of that data set. So if the data set is based on opportunity, for example, an account, you can specify that, that we're reading the sharing from the opportunity or from the account, as long as the ID of that object is in the data set. Now for sharing, there are some limitations. Uh, best recommendation is to approach each use case uh, or each case by case basis, meaning for example, we know that there are certain limits. So um, in general, if the user has um, access to more than 3,000 rows through the sharing in that data set, that might shut down unless it is an opportunity object. And then there's some other criteria that pick in. So again, highly recommended, go look at the sharing documentation and see if it fits the use case you're trying to implement uh, for. It is very important to understand that you should look at sharing as an option first and then go back to the security predicate, or you can use those both hand in hand. So you can apply maybe most of your users are okay with sharing um, and uh, the sharing rules apply for them, everything works fine. And the, for the folks who have a higher sharing number of rows, maybe the security predicates, which automatically anyway pick, uh, kick in, maybe you will have some security criteria for them that enables them to view or access the records according to a criteria that fits the security predicate. With sharing um, covered, we are going to go to the security predicates. So security predicates is the ability just to go and put a security predicate in the data set. Now again, the best way to take an example or look at an example, this is an empty security predicate. 
but we did install the sales app. So if you look at the sales app and go to any of the data sets, you will actually see samples of these security predicates right here. This is a security predicate that tells me only the uh, whoever is running a dashboard against this data set or, or a query or a step or a lens will see the records that they own or who rolls up to them. And we will explain this in a bit. So if you look at the examples, if you apply a static filter, which is very uncommon, but just to show you, it is just a filter. So for example, whoever queries this particular data set with this static filter, they will only see phones result. The second common one is record ownership. So our opportunity owner account or this opportunity data set, for example, has owner ID in it. So that means when the user logs in, we know who's logged in and we pass the user ID. And then only the users who own the records can see those records. So if we go back a little bit to that, that snapshot we had, look at this data set. If I didn't have the role, if we looked at on top, this data set, if Z logs in, we'll only see O1 and O2 opportunities. If M logs in, M will not see anything. If V logs in, V will only see opportunity three. Again, this is from the flatten exercise in the data flow editor chapter. So if I go to the third security predicate example, role hierarchy, this says, Anybody who's logged in will see, anybody who's logged in will see the, the rows they own or anybody who's logged in and their role ID or their, their, their ident identifier is in the path will, able, will be able to see also those rows. So to clarify that, just remember there's this condition and this condition. What does this mean in reality? If you look at this data set, anybody who's rolled in, Z, will see the records they own, Z and Z, and anything that they are in the path. So again, it's only Z and Z, these two, only O1 and O2. If V logs in, V will see the records they own, but also anything that V is in the rest of the path. So V is here. So V will be able, because Z rolls up to V, so V will be able to see O1, O2 and O3. Similarly, M is all the way up, but does not own anything. Still, M will see everything. And that's how we solve this particular use case number three. Now, number four is even when we apply, I only want to see the records that I own or whoever rolls up to me. Some organizations, we have super users or powerful users that want to see all the records regardless of the security predicate or the hierarchy applied could be a super admin or somebody in the hierarchy that's lower than the CXO, but still at a high level that needs to see all the records. This is where we are going to add this last filter right here. And this is a combination of going to the user object, adding a field there that, it's, that has a, a value that's, for example, either one or zero. So I have 1,000 users in my organization and only... 10 of those should see everything. So for the, those 10, the new field on the user object will have a value, for example, one. And everybody else, the 9,900 9, rest of the 990 of the users will not, uh, or they will have a value zero. So again, only 10, the powerful users have a value one on the user object, the rest is zero. So when they log in, they don't necessarily own everything. They don't necessarily, everybody rolls up to them, but their flag is one. And there's this new field in the data set that we could have created through a compute expression, just like when we did the uh, uh, du uh, duplication or, or, sorry, adding the case flag in the multi-value chapter. We just add a regular flag, one, one, one to all records. So whoever has one and logs in, they will see all the records, regardless if they own them or don't own them. These super users who have on their user object, the flag view all equal to one, it's equal to one here, the flag one equal to one, and then they will see everything. Other users have it zero, so the regular security predicates apply to them. 
And that's how you can accomplish this custom use case number four. Now I encourage you to check again, the documentation is under the main link under in the learning map. Uh, there's a chapter 18 in the old series of the uh, uh, tech lounge. Uh, it's also available on the learning map and the journey. And keep that in mind. Um, the path, like I said, it, it creates something like this, says Amir, says WWC. So I, I know where I exist in the path, if I can see the records or not. And again, just as a reminder, this is the drawing that I just showed you in the previous, based on the uh, drawing on a piece of paper. And keep in mind that the security predicates, uh, there are certain criteria you need to cover. So uh, for example, how you uh, put the space, if there's a, a single code or double code, how you escape it. And I again, encourage you to go to the documentation. This is 2.14, we actually right now have 2.16 and pretty soon the 218, which is the spring 19. Uh, it's at the end of the security guide. You can also search for that. Just search for the Einstein Analytics Guide security guide and you will see on um, the security predicates, the requirements for that.